Hey. Okay. okay. I have, uh, so let's see, Valerie gave me something. Uh, Amanda Hart is an architectural color consultant. She's licensed with the Florida Board of Architecture, also a licensed interior designer and a licensed realtor. She's worked in the architecture and design industry for 30 plus years <clears throat> with extensive design experience working with condominiums and multifamily housing, including high rises. So as I mentioned, um, the board, actually uh, Valerie really did the, the legwork on this, set, created a uh, request for proposals, sent it out. Uh, we vetted the uh, responses and uh, chose Amanda to uh, give us some thoughts about the building exterior. We've been having a lot of internal discussions and we think that it would be worthwhile to get somebody with expertise. So with that, I'll let you kind of go through what you would like to show us, Amanda. Okay, let me see if I can. Thank you for that introduction. Let me get my screen share up. A nice picture of snow. How are you going? Do you see the picture? Yep, we do. All right, thank you. Good evening, Oceans Condominium. Thank you for that introduction. And if any of you would like to learn more about me, you can visit me at amandahart.com or on any of these social medias. And if there's any residents that we're in the architecture building or design or real estate industry. I would really love to see or hear your thoughts at the discussion at the end. A special thank you to Valerie and Arno. I really wanna recognize Valerie for her excellent communication skills. She handled all of my questions with elaborate detail in a timely manner. I think there must've been about 68 emails, two phone calls. It was a pleasure to work with her on behalf of Oceans. And I want you to know, she was very careful not to disclose any personal preferences. She was very clear about being neutral and impartial and letting me explore all the possibilities and giving me the time to learn about Oceans. And I really appreciate that. You all did a great job on the community profile brochure and Arno got me paid and set up on Zoom and you make a wonderful team. Today, we're gonna to be discussing phase one of your exterior paint project, which includes only the, the primary building, the tower. At this point, the garage is less important to me until we come to a design decision regarding the tower. The, power, the tower is the main focus and the garage a supportive design element. There's many factors that contribute towards a good design. I'm going to speak about the external community influences on oceans, your lobby interior influences, an analysis of your building and its architecture, and three design ideas based on my analysis. You'll notice all of today's designs are gonna be in the same exact colors so that you can make an easier comparison. At your request, the colors selected were from the Dow Corning All Guard Elastomeric Coating Paint Palette. And I'm using the Sherwin Williams Extra White for the brightest white. We're gonna begin the discussion today about colors, but we're not gonna decide on the final colors until we decide first on a design. So don't focus too much on the colors. Try to step back take a wider perspective, get a vision of the overall look that we wanna present on the building. And we'll have time later to perfect the colors. We're gonna have 30 minutes at the end. Okay, external influences. Colors that are trending now are gray and gray undertones in all colors. Bronze and black trim. Hey, your bronze window trim is in style again. Light teals and flesh tones are popular. This is not to say that we need to use these exact colors. I don't want to be trendy. I want to be classy. We always want to use what is appropriate for our building. 
however, we can keep the trends in mind so that we look updated and fresh. Your neighborhood is both commercial and high-end residential real estate. The value of your real estate investment is increasing. And from what I could find, there's a limited supply of residential buildings right on the beach. And you are one of them. Your location suggests a casual and coastal design. Coastal colors uh, are blues and teals, which remind us of the water, sandy beige, seashells are typically white, coral, and brown. Driftwood ranges from gray to brown. Coastal colors also can mean bright colors that can handle bright sunshine or clear, light, and airy daylight colors or relaxed, worn, and faded colors. You live in paradise, a beautiful vacation destination, which means you are surrounded by hotels, resorts, and country clubs. And that poses a design challenge. Ocean's condominium is a residence. So how do you brand yourself and yet remain memorable without being mistaken for a hotel? Design-wise, we're going to keep all signage or text low and small on the building like an artist would sign a painting at the bottom. Your neighborhood has some more traditional colonial brick architecture and it's beautiful, but it is not Ocean's condominium. We wanna reveal what's beautiful about Ocean, not try to be something that we're not. So I would say no to these dark traditional brick clay colors. My last comment about external influences is going to be the public art in your area. Public art draws people together. It's a memorable attraction. It's just a thought, but I see this as an opportunity for Oceans to create a building that is a landmark icon that distinguishes your building from other buildings. A memorable design on your building would gain interest. It markets your investment. It brands you as it says something about the quality and the character of the Oceans condominium. Public art brings value to you and your community. So if you were to consider this option, the question becomes, how does it translate into the architecture of your building and how do we do it tastefully or elegantly? I think exploring a good example of this might be restoration hardware. It's an expensive line of furniture in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I have selected them because they have a similar style to oceans meaning they're contemporary, elegant, coastal. Feel free to check out their website and see if you agree. Regarding public art, this is the outside of the Restoration Hardware Signature Building. If you look closely, there is neutral, timeless exterior colors. They have those bronze window frames and railings and a flat roof. They chose to add a large, strong graphic pattern to the front of the building. And I know adding artwork to the exterior of your building may be a new thought to some of you, but it's just a thought. I want you to think about what distinguishes low-class graffiti wall murals from a high-class, tasteful, elegant pattern. I want, <clears throat> I want to plant that seed at the beginning of our journey, but Ultimately, I'm here to serve you, not impose my designs onto you or to put my signature on your building. My philosophy is to assist you in interpreting the community, location, and architecture into an appropriate, tasteful design. My goal is for you to love your home, for you to drive up to your building and say, yes, I live here. I'm not attached to your decision. 
your interior influences would be your lobby. And I love that you've already incorporated some of these coastal elements. It's got this beautiful two-story glass atrium staircase, which is open and airy, floor to ceiling windows letting the sunlight in. You've got that sandy porcelain tile floor, glass accents. I see some coastal artwork, some contemporary scu sculpture, uh, some dark wood accents. And I love this uh, uh, accent around the elevator. That's very professional looking. In, in whole, it's a mid-century contemporary elegance with a coastal theme. I'm going to grab my pointer here. Okay. Oh, sorry. So I wanted to mention the colors are obviously the blues and the whites and some gray and some dark wood. This, this is important to note because you're sitting in Virginia Beach. You're not the traditional colonial style red brick architecture uh, or housing. Let's take a look at your architecture. Here's a view of your building from the beach as is. It's an obvious rectangular building with many straight boxy lines. In my mind, the architecture might benefit from some softness, curves, landscaping, lighting. It's missing a little bit of feng shui. You have great height and visibility compared to the buildings around you, which means we want to keep it light because we want the top visible from a distance against that sky. If the top were blue, the building would become invisible against the background. The roof line is flat, so this adds a contemporary feel. I also think that the horizontal line is an element maybe worth repeating to tie it back into the body of the building. The building has some very strong vertical elements, which is nice. It's okay. Height is good. Repeating uh, a rhythm of horizontal elements might help to balance it. Your building has a lot of texture with the balconies, railings, interior window treatments, bronze window frames, and all that can add a slight busyness to the outside of the building. For that reason, I would like to highlight and focus and draw emphasis to the smooth panels while keeping the balconies and the walls around them as plain as possible. Whoops. Okay. The garage offers a wide, substantial, solid grounding base for your structure. And the pedestrian walkway offers kind of a social aspect to your building, connecting the residents to nature and community. And it, it also acts as an interactive component because cars on the road get the experience of traveling under it as they pass oceans. Here are three designs and variations. Here's your existing building. Please keep in mind there will be color variations due to the rendering program, screen monitors, and our own personal vision. You can refer to the actual paint chips on the Dow chart. In reality, the quality of sunlight is going to cause paint color to be flooded with warm yellowy white light. And the shadows is, are, are going to cause the paint to appear cooler with blue undertones. So after we decide on a design and color palette, I can adjust some of the images to depict some of those color variations. This particular design shows 
three vertical white panels in the middle because that's the main focus. I painted them white in order to keep the building looking light. The blue is a secondary supportive color here and this works. You see, if you switch it, the building looks darker because the focus is in the center and we want it to look lighter. Here they are side by side. It's a little counterintuitive, right? The building that looks lightest actually has more blue. By adding contrast on either side of the white, the white looks brighter and it's highlighted and it steals your focus and attention and you spend more time looking at the white. Moving on. Next, I tried a horizontal look to bring in the horizontal roof line. This is, I feel more open and lighter on top. The horizontal lines remind us of peaceful horizons and landscapes. And since we read left to right, it flat lines and your eye moves across the building from left to right quickly and with ease. By comparison, our eyes are attracted to this area here where the blue meets the white and contrasts on this composition on the left, but on the vertical rendering here, we're, as we come, our eyes come into the building, we're confronted with these vertical elements and it makes us stop and look up and stop and look up and pay attention. So the vertical lines are very dr dramatic and dynamic and they demand attention. So the more height something has, the more it stands out, the more verticality the element has, the more upright and at attention and formal it becomes. So you may have noticed if you were in, went into a room with a wainscot or a high chair rail, the placement of the chair rail in the interior room is more formal the higher it becomes. It becomes dressier and more uptight the taller it is. Vertical lines emphasize power. And this vertical design could potentially overpower the design and look like bars, especially if the lines were dark. For this reason, they have been kept light. Here's a three color variation on the horizontal design and a four color variation on that design. And here's a third design, a wave, a curve. I love the idea of adding some softness and a curve to the building. I think it lightens the otherwise heaviness of the building. It makes it open and airy, almost see-through. Here's another variation and a third variation. I think I prefer this last one best. Uh, it's mostly white to allow the eye to see the height of the building from a distance. The white contrasts the blue sky. It gives a glow in both the rising and the setting sun. I think the teal color combines the ocean location, your lobby colors, as well as the trends of 2021. It's classic and elegant. Artwork says that you have an appreciation for beauty. It distinguishes you as a memorable signature landmark. And if you went with something of this nature, I would not bring the teal color onto the garage at all. I would downplay the garage in a gray to match the first floor. The objective would be to emphasize the artwork on the building and everything else to be plain and uh, neutral in comparison. Okay, thank you. So let's open it up for discussion. Uh, what design appeals to you and why? Or maybe if I've missed any important nuances of your building and what do you like best? Okay. <laughs> 
I know there are some questions out there because I've been getting them. Show the, the uh, not the stripey ones, but the other ones one more time. Just so I can so, yeah, you want to go through? Okay, let's go back to that. Oh, the wavy, the, with the waves? The two wavy yeah. options, yeah. yeah. Okay. How challenging will that be for them to do it technically so it looks right? Because these are painters, not okay, artists. Okay, what do I do? Where? Yeah, Amanda, the question is, how challenging is it for these folks to actually do some of those wave type uh, paintings, you know, when we're dealing with uh, contractors who probably aren't used to doing that, would we have to hire an artist to do it or how would that be done? Yes, there are, uh, hold on a second, Art is the, let me go back to the screen share from beginning. So in that situation with the whole building, you painted white and then that color be overlaid on top of white? I'm sorry, the question is, would, would, the, would the blue be painted on top of the white? Yes, so in other words, would, would you anticipate that uh, the building would be painted white and then this would be applied on top of the white? Uh, yeah, that might be a good way. I mean, the, the person, the, the, the artist or the contractor hired to do it would be the one to ask that question, but Yes, it could be done that way. It, it doesn't have to be. It, there doesn't have to be white under it. There's white under it now. Your building's painted white currently, right? Yes. Yeah, so I don't think there'd be a need to paint new white paint under it, but you know, the artist would have to tell you. Yeah, the way something like this would be done by they have different methods of doing it. They can project it onto the building. They can print it on like two by four, uh, like traceable units so that they can work in air, you know, get one area finished and then go to the next area and it's transfer transferred accurately. You know, it's done by hand. So there are public artists, mural, mural art, there's different artists that do things like this. You know, there's some painting contractors that do it, but obviously more limiting. And I don't know if you even have, you know, budget for something like that. It's just, it's just, it was a thought because I thought it looked interesting and beautiful. So it's something to consider. It opens the door to possibility. Can you back up a slide? Uh, hold on a second. I'm just taking pictures and then back up one more slide. I think she's going to share this oh, so we will be able to, yeah. Oh, can you see it? Yes. And back up one more slide. Arna, what is a typical artist charge for something? Yeah, I'm so sorry, I'm get, I'm, it's breaking up. Yeah, it's hard because they're far from the microphones. The question is, what would an artist typically charge for doing something like that last one? Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. One. yeah, I, uh, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't know. It's going to be different in different areas of the country with different people who are different experiences. You know, you'd have to price it out. Um, I mean, I, I might be able to recommend some people, but you'd have to price it out. It's it's not part of my contract. I don't get involved in the execution. I can tell you that um, I looked today. We have several uh, people who've done very high murals, including that one is Look for the Helpers, the new uh, Mr. Rogers one on the back of a hotel. And then there are the Navy ones that they've done. Um, the tallest, most recent one that they did with the grid that Amanda is talking about, the two by four, is the Six Semper Tyrannus, which sounds horrible. But it's it's this beautiful mural on 18th Street over in the Vibe. And it's got Neptune and all kinds of things in it. It's very detailed. But they use the grid for that. And there are mural artists here. In fact, there are several. So. Um, I just thought I can look up some prices if this is something we think we might want to do. And um, I just wanted to let you know that there are people locally who do this kind of thing. So Amanda, um, Amy Sampson here, I think 
this is a great presentation. I appreciate all the thought that's gone into it. Um, I have a question about the wave image before this one. And does that, do all of these require an artist? Would this one require an artist as well? You know, I don't think so, but that it's up, it depends on the painting contractor. I've had them tape off, if they can tape off an area, like this is, in my opinion, a pretty basic graphic. It doesn't require a lot of artistic painting ability. So I would think that they might do it, but you'd have to ask. Amanda, I'm Bill, the GM. You're showing these bright colors or these, these patterns. Yeah. But you're ta we're taking important ingredients out of the rest of this. There is actual visual content because all those balconies, all that other stuff in there is getting painted. They're not going to be these darker colors. We haven't, we've only, we haven't, this, this is really a tricolor. You're bringing it just, in my opinion, and straight and steer me straight. Yeah. If you go back to, go back to one of the other pictures with the columns, blue and white, whichever one, the solid ones. You go back another one with the prints or even that one. Look at all the other contrast in that building. You see all those balconies? They're all getting worked on. They're all taking on color. They're not going to be, they're not, they're not going to be as distinctly darker than this unless we decide on colors for those balconies and all that other material. Oh, let me be clear that the balconies and this, these tall, visible, thin lines on the, the back wall of the, the side wall of the balcony in in the design, it's my intention to keep it the Sherwin Williams white, and that these panels are the only thing to receive color, and and the base. But but Amanda, all that all those all those dark spots I'm looking at, all those balconies, here are gonna be, they're going to be white. Yes, yes. they're all going to be white. Yes. But then the lines you have in between here, the columns, if you paint them white, they're all going to look the same white. These aren't going to be darker whites. Am I wrong or something? The balconies are going to have a lot of color in here. They're not going to be grays or offset Oh, you mean, whites. oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you mean that this looks darker than this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There. This whole contrast shows that all these balconies are darker to see the contrast of the whites or the colors, whether they're vertical or horizontal. We're, we're all forgetting that these balconies are gonna be white. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. When I use the rendering program and I start to paint on the building, I'm using the, the actual Sherwin-Williams paint color. The areas, I'm not, do you have that, that color on the building presently? What's we the color? A, on the building presently, we have a dirty, dusty, old linen abrasive white because it's okay. Missing. Okay. All right. So it would, <laughs> the whole entire building would be the new Sherwin Williams. And what's going to happen in here? This, like, I did not color these balconies. So you'll, you'll notice this balcony to me is more gray than say this balcony, which is also not colored. And I think <clears throat> I make up that's because the sun is coming from this side. You see how illuminated these side balconies are. And this is somewhat in shadow and it's making it look much cooler. So what I can do as I know, I don't wanna focus too much today on exact colors because we're gonna, we're gonna tweak them. I'd rather back up and kind of try to get an overall feel of what design do we like before we dive into more color options. But towards the end, I can try to uh, adjust the color based on the lighting because the sunlight floods the building and the paint appears much more faded than you would imagine. So with the white, it's good. It's going to help it look brighter, but in these shadowed area, areas, it's gonna be cooler, grayer, bluer, naturally in the white Sherwin-Williams extra white. So that's gonna happen, you know, but- I have, These are the- I have a couple. 
Yeah, I, these are the sorry. same questions I asked. I have a couple other questions. I'm sorry, Valerie. I'm okay. sorry. You want to go ahead? Yeah, do you mind if I just finish up from before? Sure, That'd sure. be great. Um, the question, would the, um, whatever we select be repeated on both sides of the building, the ocean side and the, um, the Atlantic Pacific, the Pacific facing side? And what would happen on the north and east? Um, so, so. I'm sorry, the, the north and south faces. Thank you. Great question. On the ends, I would just keep it the white, the Sherwin Williams extra white, white, and this bottom gray. Well, if if we were to to decide on that, the bottom gray color would run all the way around the base of the building consistently. That is to just drop that busyness and the detail of what's going on here is I feel distracting but <clears throat> the sides would be white the base would be gray the other side I would make it you know similar again but that just depends on your preference and the, uh, the, my final comment that I'll make is that um, I, I love the idea of the waves whether it's the watercolor or whether it's the images before this, um, it it says oceans, and it's my, my two cents worth, but I do love it. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's it's just an idea, uh, you know. I I know everybody's not always going to agree, but I I I like the movement. I like for all the reasons you just mentioned. It says oceans. That's where you're located, and it's memorable. Mm -hmm. So I have, but, I, but I still want to make sure that everybody is on track with one important ingredient here. No matter what you look at right here, distinctively, all of this that we're looking at right now is much wider than the perception of adding colors in a vertical line of white and blue. These balconies are going to blend in much wider. These panels are recessed. So why would I assume they're going to be brighter than the, than the, the balconies that I'm looking at? Pat, let me, mm -hmm. jump, let me jump in yeah. here. I had the same question for Amanda. What we're looking at is a painted photograph. This is the best photograph we could get. No, I, I, I get it, Valerie. I get that part. And all of that, all the balconies are going to be white. I mean, that they're going to be like they would be now in this picture. Because I had the same, I'm like, did you put that as gray? No, it's white. It's just that this photo showed them that way. And, you know, maybe in another view, they could be also painted white to show, but there will be variations between what they look like in different places. Because but not to this not degree. To It'll never be to this degree. It'll never be to this dark shade. It's just too, and I, I'm just, I, I work with paint too on big buildings at uh -huh. one of the biggest paint companies at the beach. I, I see the color rhythm of adding the wave, kind of like what Amy said, or the, you know, the, the dual colors, but everyone looking at this really has to remember that you're going to see a lot more white than what you're looking at. Yeah, thank you, uh, William. Thank you for making that distinction. You're absolutely right. The entire building, if we were to go ahead and paint it the Sher Sherwin Williams extra white, the whole building would be uniformly lighter. The sides and this this whole area would match. Now, when I say match, obviously be the same paint color, but you're still you're still going to be able to see there are balconies there. And the reason why we see balconies there is because of shadow and light. So there's still going to be shadows, light, grayness, absolutely won't be to this extent. It'll be more uniform, which is, in my opinion, even better than this rendering. Question, is our current price based on a single color? Or yes. is there some ability to alter the color? I have two colors or three colors or however many colors. I can vary the colors by amounts, but not not with artistic work. That's not included. So something like this simplistic wave, this two-tone thing, which to me would be the most simplistic rendering of, of this idea. How would the paint company, the whoever the, the person is going to be applying it, would they consider this to be too, too challenging or 
I have not even presented this to them. I'm sure other people have given them like a cross VX or colors. I would see that these are sprayed on it techniques that we're doing. So there'd have to be someone that says, okay, move the tape up four feet and seven feet here and make a curve. These guys are only going to paint what we tell them to do. Amanda, can you go to the, um, the photo of the back of the building? Because I think the light on the balconies on that photo was better to demonstrate what they look like uh, on his, uh, this was the best photo of the front and we could have had a ma have Amanda do the um the back of the building because the light was better but you mean this is the as is but okay right. the back another side the other um, side, yeah that had the tennis courts it was your the end slide for your presentation I think. oh okay sure yeah because that would have been a more representative color of what the balconies mm -hmm. look like in bright sun it's just that getting the front shot, you know, we could have had Amanda do the back of the building because the light was better in the photo. But my thought was everybody who lives here is related to the front when they look at it. So this is more what you would see on the other side when it's like morning up until 11 a.m. But we didn't have a photo where the light was as direct of the front as this. So if you saw the back with those things on it, I think you would see that it's not shaded and there's, it doesn't look like the balconies are painted gray, which I think is what the concern is. Is that what we're hearing? Oh yeah, I just, those balconies aren't painted white either in this picture right now, it's faded. Well, but that's because our, that's because our paint is faded, but, but they're, yeah. they're as white as everything else is white now. And if they're painted new white, then they would be white. <laughs> that's just my, you know, because Amanda and I did go back and forth on this because I was having trouble. I, you know, I was like, I have questions. I don't understand. Did you put gray there? And it's it's no, it's it's just I, I think this is a better side to describe why the balconies look like there is a shading there because there is because they're recessed. Look so, at the north side, how gray that is, because that's not catching the sun that's in the shade. Yes, exactly. Right. So that's really the, the photo that we provided. Um, so, you know, you, from a rendering perspective, it might've been better to choose the back, but I, I felt like um, the front was what we all saw. Conversely, when people drive by, more people see it from the back than from the front. So what we do on the back will also have an impact. Um, and if, if we choose to move forward with looking at designs and different colors of paint, Amanda can also do renderings of the other side so we can see what they look like. Um, you know, if it's just all white on the north and south side, then we probably don't need to have those render, you know, a rendering done of those. Can but I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so you know, let's, let's, let's um, play devil's advocate for a minute and go back to that single wave design with the teal for a second. Um, I'm just thinking for practical purposes, uh, that one, okay. Is it possible, just curious as to whether you could do a gray stripe uh, between the white and that teal to tie in with whatever gray color you're gonna do in the, uh, the foundation, the, the, the parking garage, the, the base, so that the gray is tied into the building so you have white and then a small strip of gray and then that teal color, and then you have the gray down below on the base. To me, that makes more sense than the base being gray and then there's no other gray on the building. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think if the gray were on the base of the building, maybe we would, it's a light gray and we could explore, you know, what shade of gray it needs to be, but I think maybe the garage would be, I'd like to see a rendering of the, the whole garage and the base of the building gray, and that would tie it together there. We could, we could explore, you know, how a new rendering of how it looks with a gray stripe in there, but I would, I would guess that you know, I don't want it to look too like racy stripe, you know, it's got to be subtle, minimal, simple. I think the more simplistic, the more classy. Just, I, 
I'd have to see it, but I have a feeling like we want to kind of not too many stripes. When I look at the 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 this rendering, for example, this is a it's pro it's too many stripes for me. Like it starts to look just like stripes, which it's it's okay. This doesn't look bad, but it's uh it's a little more busy. It's not as busy as the vertical elements. The vertical one uh, is well, it. I wasn't thinking of a stripe. I was just saying you follow the contour of the wave. Uh huh. It would be maybe a, a, a two foot, two foot wide gray that just follows the same curve. If you're going to do the the foundation of the parking garage in gray, just to have yeah, to we could look gray. at it. It might look good. It might look good. Just it's a, a good idea. In the gray. So I need to throw a wrench into this whole project. For a second, we we have issues with the parking garage, and if that's an inclusion of trying to tie colors later, that the vertical ventilation pieces in that garage, which are now bronze, may sooner than later be, come out of this picture, and there may be sol, um, some brickwork in for ventilation, like blocks, hollow blocks. So the front of the the we haven't. This hasn't come to the board yet, but where where would that go? All all of those you see the vertical. You go to the left. You see the lines in the front of the parking garage. Come here in the front. Yeah, you see those vents right across there. Yeah, those here may and come here. out. Those all may have to come out in the future. And we this, were thinking about blocking this. it in with breathing brickwork in there. Yes, those are all ventilation vertical. Oh, I see. Oh, are, oh okay. Um, we may well, lose those. We may lose those. So. If you're trying to define this, those louvers as part of this color scheme down the road, I wouldn't include that yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I would explore some other options other than brick, but there's a more contemporary looking fi uh, finishes maybe, but that's up to you guys. My engineering mind is kicking in. I'm looking at that picture and I'm saying, the only way I could see that with my eye is if I was on the beach on a hook and ladder all the way on the top of the ladder, <laughs> is it worth spending the money for that when you're not going to see it and on a dead end street? And also, I'd like to see it from the street view, not from high tower shot down at the building. Yes, yes. I Why spend the money for a wave when you, we have a white building. It's iconic. That's that's a good point. I think it's more visible from the streets. Uh, you probably get more passerbys on the street side, but you would you also have a lot of hotels around you that are looking at this building from all levels. So you really are visible at different heights. But you're going to have to tell me what's visible from the beach, what's visible from the street, where you're going, where it's going to be effective. Of course, the wave could be positioned higher or lower depending on the visibility. But I'm looking at it only from this one angle and maybe that angle isn't best. Amanda, do you think it would be helpful if I shared the community profile with everyone? It had pictures from in front of the Cavalier Beach Club looking up at our building and that area was visible. That was act, they were using that as a real estate photo to sell mm -hmm. those condos on the front of the parking garage but it was a, a shot across their pool looking at us. <laughs> they were right, right, right. Yeah, no, I remember that picture. Yeah, yeah. You, may, you may decide another photo is really uh, a better view for you. I, I don't know your area as well as you. One other question on this particular rendering, and that is, so where the teal is at the bottom, with those, uh, with those uh, balconies, within the teal framework be painted teal or would those balconies be painted white? Okay, do you mean here? So on the bottom half on where the teal color is, where the here. white is, here. those balconies within the teal color. No, no, they would be white. They would be white. This, yeah, this, the whole balconies, these, the vertical balcony structures, the, there's this wall, this line on either side of the balcony, the sides, all white, white, white panels, white 
your window treatments, you know, this whole area is, I mean, you have the bronze, it's mostly all window with bronze frame, but the wall that's visible would be white. The okay. blue would only be on the, these flat panels. And then I care in this rendering, I carried it down to this first floor. Now I did study what it looks like when you have a design and then you have balconies that are a different color. And it's actually pretty normal to have that because it's a persistence of vision that you follow the line, even the way our balconies in the middle. If you start looking up at buildings as you go by them, you'll find that's more common than not. Cause that was my question too. I'm like, how does that work? But then I started trying to educate myself on what buildings look like when that happens. And I think if maybe I shared some pictures that would help people understand that. But, it, but it, I know this is the first time people are seeing it. So there are very good questions because we're all Yeah, yeah you question. might be, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. To, let me just comment on that. You, you might be familiar with artwork triptych artwork where you have like three pieces that are grouped together and one it, together they make one picture so that's pretty common in art you know you'll see these vertical columns in between the panels are also painted white and they they don't disturb the graphic at all i'm I'm sorry, yeah. someone else yeah. was gonna ask a question. Yeah, this is Arna Zerinsky. The um, question I have is, you know, the, the reason that we're putting this color, this paint on, really it's not so much a paint, it's a silicone material, is to waterproof those panels. So uh -huh. I guess my question is, can you paint over that silicone elastomeric coating? So for example, if people like that watercolor, we just go ahead and paint everything white and then come behind, is it possible or will paint not stick to that silicone? I don't know. That's a good uh, question. That's a great question. I would the answer is no. Yeah, I would imagine no. I would imagine that would not be a good idea, but the painter is going to have to answer that. No, the answer is- Would that be possible is, on, the, on the image no. before this one? The, the design before this one, Amanda, where you said that it, wouldn't require an artist. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. It's would up to that the painting one? company. Yeah. Right. So with this one, could you could, with the silicone that we're going to be using or whatever that the application is, uh, yeah. could that be used on this without having a painter, uh, an artist? I mean, I mean, that's what I'm wondering is because it requires a primer, and then they go back down with the first coat and then a second coat, and they got to measure the thickness to make sure that we're getting the physical barrier that we want to achieve. And so it is a question whether these guys would be able to do that or could you paint over it, I guess, to create that. Design. You could always buy, you could always look into buying something graphically done and cut out and stuck on like you do with cars, but this paint has rubberization in it. Yeah, that's what I it's, thought. The reason our, if you look at our cab, our walkway over there, right in this picture, that's just dirt on top of silicone paint. You can't go up and use latex colors. You have to spray the rubber back on the rubber. Yeah, so, but didn't I hear that the, the contractor could mix any Sherman colors? Color. Yes, you can put color in the application at the time of application. Right. But to stop the whiteness, then go into blues and, and pick it back up with whites, it's a lot harder than, it's not like latex or oil enamel paint. I, you can you can throw paint on here. It can rain thirty seconds later. It'll drip off the elastic rubber. Wow! If it were elastic, like if the one wave, if that were just blue elastomeric paint, you know. If you cut a region, then, then you could paint it. And yeah, then you that might work. Paint it. I'm just trying to look for the art of the possible. I've been a fan of the big white iconic building. Our Facebook page is called the unofficial that tall white building. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, uh, so I've always been a fan, but I'm, I'm intrigued and I'm trying to think through possibilities. So it's, it's really helpful to see the possibilities and talk about whether or not they are possible. So yeah, I'm ease that application perspective that I'm gathering, we would go potentially back to one of the first two renderings, just because you're painting whole panels, a whole color, as opposed to well, I sort of, I'm, have, I'm, I'm okay with the, you know, with the one swirl where you've got a pretty big swath of that color, 
and you can put it up as high as you want, um, or maybe adding a gray you know, gray level to it. But that's going to be a lot easier to do. It sounds seems like, and may not cost us more money, um, as opposed to solid white. It sounds yeah. like the design is a future project where right now we need to concentrate on just what CRW needs to do. Right, but the other, the other practical point that I think is important for the owners to be aware of, and this came from the SKA engineer, is to remind folks what, what's being shown there with color on it is the, uh, the cementus panels. And behind those cementus panels, there's no insulation and then you have your interior drywall. To those people who are on the west side of the building in the summertime, they feel the radiant heat that comes in. And if we choose a darker color on those panels, it's going to be even hotter in your units. So you know, the recommendation is if you go with any color on the exterior, especially on the west side, make sure it's a light pastel color that's not going to absorb a lot of sunlight. You want to have a light color. So need to keep that in mind in terms of thinking about the colors. So don't do the stripes, what you're saying. Well, I mean, you could do the, the stripes with a light color, but I wouldn't do anything that's too gray or dark because I think it's going to make the building very hot. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But Arno, it, we're not painting the big white panels that are there, correct? No, well, I mean, I'm talking really about the do. ones where- people, Right, the narrow ones are the ones that'll be- Yeah, but that's what he's referring to. These things are yeah. your, your panels that go into your- Right, 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 so, yes. So if we have colors on those, yeah. just be aware that you got to choose white colors. Don't sure. even think about it. And even down here, if you choose something that's dark blue, those units are going to get flat. Right. So. Amanda, do you have experience with that, with elastomeric paint and, and heat transfer? I know, you know, Arno has windows that and walls that he experiences that. And I didn't know if, if you had any experience, because I know a lot of the buildings you do are in very hot locations, not all of them. <laughs> right, right. Well, obviously, no, it's true. The darker color on the building is going to hold more heat. That is true. Uh, right. As far I, how much more because of the elastomeric coating, I have no idea. Yeah, the problem in our building is that if you open up your drywall, you're looking at the interior of that panel that's on the exterior. We have no yeah. insulation at all in between. It's very thin, so. yeah. There's um, a comment. Um, the uh, I am a realtor and been involved with interior design for many years. I love the watercolor artwork. I would, however, like to see a little more of that perhaps closer to the middle of the building. I agree that it is a classy, elegant, and artistic with an ocean feel. Can you offer a rendering with a little more of the artwork? That kind of sounds like she wants it in the middle. Um, another so, um, higher here. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, Lori, if you want to unmute and kind of clarify that, that would be helpful. If she's here. Hi. Um, yes, I was thinking more toward the middle of the building. I love that, but it's beginning to sound as though it's not going to be possible uh, with the polymer paint that you have to use. Um, but yeah, I do love it. And I think it would look amazing going all the way around the building like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it can be as high or in whatever shape that you want it. Like, I, you know, it can be designed anyhow. So absolutely could be higher, but, you know, it's going to be a, a balance of, you know, we just discussed, well, maybe it's too dark. So you guys are going to have to first decide whether you want to even attempt this whether you can find someone who can do it, whether you want to pay for that. Yeah, I think it would be the most striking building in Virginia Beach. I, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, that is, Thank, it's you. Gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> There's another comment um, that's reminding everyone, Oceans can e uh, owners can email comments, <laughs> excuse me, uh, to Oceans Tower 4004 at gmail.com to let the board know your opinion on white versus graphics and colors. And that is true. And, and um, we will, Arno, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but we're going to send out information um, and ask people to respond with their thoughts as soon as possible so okay. that we can keep the, uh, the ball rolling and get thing, the paint ordered in, in whatever works best. But the board needs to hear from everyone. So when it's sent out via the manage, I know, I'm sorry, Arno, can you say that? I'm losing my voice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'll send out an email blast with a survey monkey 
link so that you'll be able to comment and then we can compile those and share it with the board so we can get input. Okay, and Valerie, what would you, do you want me to send you these three designs in a PDF? That would be helpful. Yeah. Or are the, the which ones, like all, all the ones we looked at today? Um, what do Bruce and Arno think? Because I've been relying on. Um, you can send them all to me. I don't care. I, we can handle any of these pictures. Yeah. Get them out one way or another. But I think we should, we should have all of them and present all of them for people to look at. Okay, if you could just send PDF of those, then we'll, and people can rank, or they can say, no, I want it white, or this is the only one I want, or I like this first, I like this second, or I really like that watercolor wave, but if that doesn't happen after that, this is my first choice. Mm. And Survey Monkey can do that, and that, I think that's a good way to get people's input. Great, I'll send you uh, the images in this presentation. Great, Great. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being patient with me and all of my questions. Oh my goodness, you were the best. So it's my pleasure to assist you. So uh, I'll send you that in a few minutes. And then is there anything else I can answer for you tonight? Okay, no. I'll, I'll wait from, to hear from you to know how to proceed. I actually do have one other question. If you don't mind. This is Lori <laughs> again. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks it. I just feel like if we are going to do any artwork or design on it, I feel like it should go a little bit higher than to maybe to 40% of the building rather than 25. I don't know if anybody else feels the same, but I was wondering if we could get renderings of that as well. Maybe a little higher. Well, what we can do is um, we can have people vote and that can be part of, would you like to see it higher? Because when we go back to Amanda, we want, we want to consolidate if there's anything else we want to see so that we're not changing too many times. Because as you can imagine, it can get to be a lot. So yeah, I, I maybe think if you, uh, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Maybe if you have them vote on, you know, I'm going to send you all the images, but my experience is that people can be confused and overwhelmed with too many choices. So if they, if the board, or if you want to narrow it down to maybe three and then send that, and then once people vote, like make sure they know it's not final, the color could change, the height, the amount could change, but it's just an overall survey of a general idea. And cost has got to factor into this somehow. So we've got to check on that and the practical application of any any of this artistic stuff. Sure. Yep. Yep. I already I already had a couple irons in the fire on that today, just in case. Uh, I think you did a great job, by the way. Um, I'm very impressed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Amanda. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, signing off. Thank you. I'll wait to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.